Hello traders, Steve Gans here with the continuing Options Trading 101 series. This is a multi-part series that's really getting back to the core basics of options and what options are. So this is the fourth in the series right now. The prior one was on call options, so this one's going to be on put options. So let's just kind of walk through put options and what they are. This is going to be kind of a little bit of an overview because I covered this particular section in the call options as well, but I think it's important to make sure that people have these basics in hand. So an options contract is a financial instrument that gives the buyer the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell an underlying asset at a predetermined price and on a predetermined date. Options contracts can be used by investors to hedge against risk, essentially buy insurance, we'll look at that in just a moment, or to speculate on the future price of an asset. So to give you a sense of how this works, there's really only two options. There's puts and calls, but these two options can create four different positions depending on whether you're the buyer or the seller. The call buyer is said to be long the call, and they have the right to buy at a predetermined price. This is considered a bullish type of position. The call seller is considered to be short the call. They have the obligation to sell something at that predetermined or that strike price. Again, we'll see what that strike price means here in just a second. And this is considered a bearish type of position. So in the case of puts, the put buyer is long the put. They have the right to sell at a certain price and it's considered a bearish position. The put seller is short the put. They have an obligation to buy at whatever the strike price is, and it's considered a bullish position. So it's easy to say all this stuff, but let's dig into an example. I like using the example of a home because many people do own homes, not everyone of course, but many people do, or at least they understand the concept. So buying a put option is a lot like buying an insurance contract on my home. I pay an insurance premium for a set period of time. Usually I buy insurance annually for my home. That premium gives me the right, but not the obligation, to put or sell my house to the insurance company in the case of a disaster. As the seller of the put, or insurance in this case, if my house burns down, wiped out in an earthquake, whatever, the insurance company has the obligation to pay me the agreed upon price, which in the case of an option is called the strike price, but they have an obligation to pay me the agreed upon price for my home during the period of time that I hold that insurance contract or that option. So the seller of a put option has the obligation to buy the asset at the strike price on or before the expiration date. The premium is the price that the buyer paid to the seller and what the seller received for the option or the insurance contract. The strike price is the specified price at which the buyer can force the seller to buy the underlying asset. The act of forcing them to buy it is what's called putting or exercising the option. The expiration date is the specified on date on which the option, or in the case of insurance, the policy expires. So hopefully that kind of simplifies you know, that whole put thing and uh, in relationship to what it would mean in insurance on a house. Now, put options are inversely or negatively correlated. So what that means, let me just uh, move my smiling face up here a little bit. So what that means is as the price of the underlying goes up in value, the price of the put will drop in value and vice versa. If the price of the underlying drops in value, that put becomes more valuable. So think of it in terms of your house. If your house uh, suffers, uh, your house is $150,000 and it suffers massive damage, $90,000 in damage, well, that value goes up. I now have an insurance policy on that 
that I can <clears throat> cash in for that missing portion. Now, this means that puts are an excellent tool for shorting the market. So in many different types of accounts, for example, in an IRA, you can't short stock, which means that you benefit when the value of that stock goes down. But if you're an options trader, you can buy puts, which allow you to benefit when the value of something goes down. So puts can be a great tool to use when the market gets at maybe some elevated points, some high points where uh, we as traders think that the market might be overvalued, might start dropping a little bit. Now we're currently November 26, 2024. I have actually started putting on some put trades where I do think the market might back up a little bit. I don't think it's going to collapse. I don't think it's going to free fall or anything like that. But as we're pressing on all time highs and not breaking through them as of today, put options are relatively cheap. So I am picking some up to act as a hedge against long positions that I personally have. So hopefully that gives you a better understanding of put options and what put options are. In the next part of this series, we're going to get into a really critical piece that many people don't understand about options, and that's intrinsic and extrinsic values. This is really, really key to understanding the volatility piece in options. So look for that session to be coming up next. Take care, everyone.